I've been lukewarm on Star Force. I used to play the NES version a bit and thought it was fine, but not something exceptional. In Japan, Star Force is regarded as a bit of a minor classic. And I'm going, yeah, it's okay, I guess. Playing it in the context of the Famicom releases, though, Star Force is excellent. This is the most action packed game that the Famicom has gotten so far. I totally get why someone playing in 1985 would be blown away by it. There's something I need to mention at the top, too. I had contradictory sources for the release date on Star Force. And in this case, they were contradictory Japanese sources. Sources from 1985 only indicated that the game would be released in June. So my best source on this was Hudson themselves. Hudson Best Collection Volume 5 for the GBA says that this was released on June 20th, so that's what I'm going with. Superficially, Star Force seems about as straightforward as any vertically scrolling shoot 'em up can get. You shoot two shots forward, the only power-up you can collect lets you have twice as many shots on the screen at once. Enemies come at you in waves, and there are ground targets you can blow up. There's a lot of subtlety in Star Force, though. There aren't any fixed levels, for example. The terrain is randomly selected from what's appropriate for that area. Same thing for the enemy waves. There's a certain group of enemies that are assigned to each area, and those are the ones that randomly appear as you move through it. They also get more aggressive as the areas go on, firing more shots at you as they move through. You don't complete an area by covering a certain amount of distance. Instead, you complete it by shooting enough targets. Once sufficient targets are reached, the game rolls over to a base that you have to destroy. The bases aren't too tough, they just have a couple turrets around them and move back and forth. The areas are assigned by the Greek alphabet as well, so you'll see it goes Alpha, Beta, Gamma. And since the area indicator only gives the first English letter, you'll see things like Area E appear twice for Epsilon and Eta. If you manage to clear Area Omega, then the game goes into Area Infinity and just starts counting up numbers to go with that. The enemy behavior patterns in Star Force tend to be pretty complicated. Sure, you've got your basic ones that move in with a sine wave, or zip down to the bottom and then shoot back up. But there's 22 varieties of basic enemies in the game, and each of them have distinctive behavior. The toughest ones for me are the ones that explode into a fountain of bullets when you hit them, since they tend to restrict your movement an awful lot and show up in groups. The other nasty ones are the ones that attack from behind. Since you can't really shoot them down as they swarm up from the bottom of the screen, space gets filled with bullets quickly. When you're shooting, you can typically have three pairs of shots on screen at once. The game does auto-fire when you hold down the button, but the shot rate is very slow. You'll do better rapidly pushing it yourself. Of course, in a game as frantic as Star Force, you're going to exhaust yourself pretty quickly trying to do that. Which is why I switched over to a Joy Card. This is a Hudson manufactured controller for the Famicom that has a few levels of auto fire. Hudson also released an arcade style joystick at about the same time as Star Force. I don't have that one, I'm afraid, though. Star Force has a ton of ways to get bonus points. Easiest to find are the hidden panels. Just shoot these spots on the ground and an H appears, destroy the H, and you get 2,000 points. The Big B and Little B are things that you collect for bonus points at the end of each stage. Sometimes you'll see targets on the ground that are question marks. These are Magicka, and for most of the group, 
they'll turn into frowny faces when shot. But some of them are smiley faces. Find the smiley face, get an extra life. There's a risk in shooting up that group though. Instead of getting destroyed, these remain in place and block all your forward shots. Starting on stage 6, you might encounter terrain that's a ladder of arrow targets. Shoot 10 of these in a row for 80,000 points. The most valuable target of all is also the rarest. The Cleopatra bonus is obtained by finding a target in a late level, shooting it 16 times, then Cleopatra appears and you collect her for 1 million points. I've yet to encounter that structure myself. Both the difficulty of playing those high levels and the randomness of it appearing, I think, conspire against me. And then there's Larios. You'll encounter Larios pretty early on in the game. The music will suddenly change to be ominous, and then a circle will gently descend from the top of the screen. Four smaller objects appear at the edges around it, and when the circle flashes, they rush in to complete a diamond. When you destroy Larios, that triggers the power-up to appear. But there's a special bonus point with Larios as well. When the core flashes, if you shoot it eight times, you'll destroy it before it forms. That's worth 50,000 points. However, if you shoot early, then it doubles the number of hits it takes to destroy Larios. This is super tough to do without an auto-fire controller, but it is possible. There's one more special enemy bonus to talk about, and that's Gerard. These tough little guys tend to arrive with another group of enemies. And if you pop him, then he destroys all of the enemies on the screen. I've even seen Gerard come in as a wave, but that's pretty rare. With Star Force, Hudson's finally gone away from trying to copy Nintendo's Pulse line label. While they kind of look like everyone else's Famicom carts now, I still think it's an improvement. There will be a Famicom sequel to Star Force called Super Star Force. The title screen credits the original design for Star Force to Tekon, and they're the ones who developed the arcade game. Even before this game was released, Tekon would change their name to Tecmo. We're going to be seeing a lot of shoot 'em ups in these early Famicom years, and Star Force really is exceptional. It throws a ton of enemies at you constantly. There's a huge variety of stuff. And there's some cool stuff that you can try to do for extra points. It also ramps up the difficulty pretty quickly. I think a real case could be made that as of June 20th, 1985, this is the best Famicom game. 